Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're gonna be covering some enumeration of Active Directory before you actually have a foothold and are on the network. And more specifically, we're going to be covering some LDAP enumeration, curb roasting, looking at SMB shares, and getting information from the RPC, such as usernames. So that is kind of where we're headed in this video. In the future, we're gonna be doing some post exploitation for Active Directory. I think that is going to be extremely valuable to you, especially if you want to be a penetration tester. But what we're covering in this video will also be helpful for you if you are looking at doing some CTFs and just practicing some Windows boxes, because you're often gonna come across SMB shares that have information in them in order for you to get an initial foothold. Also, you'll probably come across some domain controllers in CTFs and definitely in the future if you want to be a penetration tester and you're gonna to have to know how to get information back from LDAP as well as the RPC port 135. And we're gonna go ahead and cover this. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so here we are. I have already ran the Nmap scan on the box forest and I ran this so that you could look at what a domain controller looks like when you run an Nmap scan against it. You're gonna see usually a lot of ports open but the one that matters the most i think is this port 88 when you see this you can automatically think domain controller because it is going to be doing curb roast authentication and i think port 88 is only open for domain controllers if not you can let me know down in the comments but i'm pretty sure this indicates that it is a domain controller so when attacking a box that looks something like this the first thing i always do is go to smb client and smb map and crack map exec and so we'll go check these out so we can go smb map and then i think it's a dash h for this tool and we're 161 and we'll see if there's any shares that we can access because often in ctfs if there are any shares then we like to look at them because there's often information stored in them that help us solve the box so i think smb client is a dash l 10 10 10 161 enter and I know some people like to do a null authentication like this. I'm not actually sure if that U is supposed to be uppercase. And it says we get a failed. So we're not able to access anything in the file shares. The next thing I like to do is go to this RPC right here because we have access to a tool called RPC Client. And we can pull down users. Also, we can use the LDAP and pull down users through that as well. So what we can do is come over here and we'll just use LDAP search first. And we can just say, actually we'll use RPC client because it's easier. So we'll just say RPC client, just like this. And I don't actually remember the commands that we're supposed to use. We're gonna use this in, this is very important because this is an update that you will need to use this in if you don't nothing is going to work for you with rpc client so we can say rpc client and we're going to go like this with no user we're going to tell it we don't want it to ask for a password and then i think we can just give it the ip address and it lets us in so now we can hit tab twice and it'll give us all the options that's a lot of options i don't want to see all those but what we want to do is enumerate the DOM users, I think that's right. And this will give us the users right here. So we have these as the users. We also have the administrator up here, the guest, the KRBTGT, so the ticket granting ticket service, which doesn't really mean anything for us. And we also see that there's this RID number right here. You can actually copy these and paste them into Google. I'm not sure if it will tell you what they are assigned to. These are like a user ID for Active Directory. You get a RID whenever you create an object. And I think they're used like a SID number. I'm not actually entirely sure exactly how these are assigned, but that's kind of what they do. You can Google it if you want to know more about them. So now we can go see another way to grab the users because RPC client and LDAP sometimes bring down different users or a different set of users. And it's always best to double check because these are just tools. So we can go LDAP search and then we want to run the host. So we'll say dash H 10, 10, 10, 161. We want to just send this and see what happens. I think we need to run a dash X and a dash S, the base and the naming context like this. 
and it's telling us this isn't work because we're giving it the capital H this recently changed and we have to put in here LDAP like this and it's going to tell us the naming context which actually didn't really help us out much. Let's see if our in-map scan had it. We're looking for the DC name, so HTB right here, this HTB local. So it tells us we don't actually need to run the naming context now that we have that, so we can delete all of this. If the in-map scan didn't pull this back right here, this is one way to get that HTB dot local. So now we can type in dash B and then DC equals HTB comma DC equals local and we get a bunch of information back so you can actually read through here um, this isn't going to be our final destination but there is sometimes some interesting information in here the same account name but I'm not gonna bore you through reading that because that's not actually what we're after. What we're gonna be after is an object. So what we can do is tell it we are after a very specific object and we want the object class of the user. And one of the things you should know is you can actually just copy this right here and save it somewhere so that you have it and you don't have to go through all of this. You might have to check the naming contents the naming context but that would be it and then you can just paste in what we're about to type in here so we're gonna grab the same account name and I think I'm actually just gonna copy it from up here where we saw that so I don't misspell anything paste that in and then we're going to grep the same account name and then we can run this and see what happens requesting the account name Okay, so I unquoted this and it worked for me. So now we have the usernames that we saw earlier. And if you notice, we're actually missing one that we had earlier. So let's go up to the RPC client. And the one that we actually needed is not in the LDAP search. So this is why you would run both because we're gonna end up needing this service alfresco in order to complete the box. So if we were to run something like this, we could copy this, come over here, we'll gedit users.txt to paste these in, and we can cat the users.txt, and then we want to awk, and we want to cut at the second position, so we can say print like that, and we can just grab these and put them into our file. So now we can gedit this and delete all of that. And now we have these users, but we also need that one we just saw, which was a SR, was it SVC dash alfresco like that, I believe. So we can save that, come back over here and check this out and make sure we got the right user. Yes, SVC alfresco. So now that we have a list of users, what you can do is go to crackmap exec or curbrew and start brute forcing for passwords. But I think we'll save that for another video because that is not the direction of this box. The direction that this box goes is to go to an impact an impacket tool with our user and check out the get in p users. And so this actually comes installed on Kali automatically. So it's impact it, get np users like this, and we'll run dash h to see what our options are. And we'll see if we can pull down a hash for one of the users that we have. So we can type in get np users, and then we give it the domain controller IP. So DC IP 10, 10, 10, 1, 61. And then we want to request from htb.local and you actually need this little slash here, this trailing slash. And recently I was running a tool that took me a while to figure out why I was getting a syntax error. I think it was Hydra and I needed the slash at the front. So you do have to be aware of these slashes sometimes. So if we run this, it gives us back this hash and with the updated hashcat, it should just crack this automatically. So we can just say gedit hash.txt paste this in, save, and I actually have not opened up rocku.txt, so let's see if hashcat has an automatic word list that it will use. 
hashcat dash hashcat hash and then we don't have a word list so let's see what it does i guess while this runs okay since this says it doesn't have enough memory what we'll do is copy this and when it says it doesn't have enough memory allocated it is because i don't have enough memory allocated to this specific vm i actually have a different one over here that runs with a lot so we'll just come over here and paste in the hash and save it and we'll run hashcat over here so hashcat hash.txt and we want to run it with rocku and i do have rocku opened up on this specific machine so it should run and pull down the hash for us and it does and we're told that it is a service so now we can copy this come back to this machine and we can gedit our user.txt and we are going to paste this in because we saw that this hash belongs to this user right here. So now if we save this and we come back to our in-map scan, we can win our M into this machine and get user. So we can close that and scroll down to the bottom. We can cat our users.txt and we can say evil win rm and i think it wants a user of svc dash alfresco so we'll go dash i now it should run and we are user on the box so if we give a am i we're going to be at this service alfresco right here so we are going to do a post enumeration for active directory later on but for now we're going to go check out the smb enumeration all right we're going to be starting with the box active from hack the box and so I went ahead and ran this in-map scan the IP address is 10 10 10 100 I ran it with a t5 because I didn't want to wait and it wasn't pinging so I went ahead and did the dash capital PN and we have the in-map scan here now this is what a normal looking Active Directory in-map scan is going to look like sometimes you'll have a port 80 open or you'll have a web server Sometimes you won't and when you don't you can just look at this and you can just think okay Here's what I need to do is I'm going to start if it were me. I'm going to start right here uh, 139 445 then I would go to uh, 398 4 so this is just kind of my Method that I would be working through this if this is how I'd go about it so what we are going to start off with is looking at this port 445 and we'll come over here and we can actually just type in SMB map and it will look just like this. You've seen this before. What we're doing is looking to see if we have any file shares that we have access to with an, with anonymous login. So we can go ahead and run that and see what it pulls down. And it says we have access read only to replication. So you've seen this also before. So we run this SMB map and then we can also run SMB client and then it's forward slash forward slash 10 10 10 100 and then we can run this slash replication replication and then we can do a dash C and then we can type in recurse recurse LS and so what this is going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to run through all of the files and it's going to list them out for us and this is uh, helpful if you don't mind having your terminal full of stuff but I like doing this because the other way to go about doing this is to actually log in to the SMB server anonymously and then going through and manually looking at everything that just takes a lot of time and it's a lot of typing and it's a lot quicker to just use that command we just saw but if you wanted to go ahead and do it the manual way what you would do is just type in smb client and then we can type all this in and we'll just delete this and then we hit enter and it should load us with a command prompt and then you would just have to go in here and you can ls i don't remember yeah dura works too and then you would just see this little d right here it means it's a directory so you would go ahead and then you would cd into active.htb and then you would go ahead and look at the files again and then you would choose whatever folder you wanted to go into and so on and so forth and it just really takes forever so it's a lot quicker to do it this way when this 
loads for us, we can start all the way at the top and we can look and see, okay, if we CD'd into active.htb, this is what you're gonna see. And then the way uh, SMB client works is it just is gonna go through and list for us each one of these files. It's gonna log, it's gonna CD into the next one and then it's gonna list it, CD into the next one, and it's gonna list it. And so if it were my first time going through here, I would remember these, they could be useful and then I would keep just keep on scrolling but because I would definitely look at users if I was uh, first time on this box see if I could pull down some users because if you have a user you can try and pull down hashes which we're actually going to see a little bit later um, with some in packet tools so if you can get a user you might be able to get lucky enough to pull down a user with a password or a password hash that we can crack and we are actually going to see this so that is helpful that it has users listed there if you were on a CTF or some kind of certification, it's possible that they would just throw this user here and then they would give you just a whole list of users just to lead you down a rabbit trail. So you got to be careful of doing something like that. So we have the registry policy. We have groups. And at this point, this is something that's interesting. Uh, because if you have this groups.xml and you have it inside the policies, this actually is going to have for us the information we need. And so in order to grab this file, because we're already logged in right here on this SMB server, we can go ahead and just copy this entire thing and save us some time. And we can go ahead and CD to this location. And I don't really want to get this um, at this specific spot. So what I'll just show you what we're going to do is you'd go ls and you'd see this. And then you can type in get and then groups.xml. And I'm actually going to move over to a different folder and grab this because it's going to be grabbing right here in my Linux box. And I don't really want it there. But that's how you'd go ahead and get this folder. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to switch locations and then we'll go ahead and get this file and look and see what's inside. Okay, so we're going to grab this file. We can close out of here and then we can go ahead and ls and then we can cat this out and we can see what is in here. And so we see we have a password. It is hashed and we're going to go ahead and crack this. So what we'll do is we will highlight the entire thing. Now, I don't expect you to know this, but whenever you see something inside the group policies, you can know that this hash is going to be the group policies hash. So you can actually type in GPP dash decrypt just like this. And then you should be able just to just paste in your hash and then hit enter. And it will go ahead and decrypt that for us. So it tells us this is the password for this account right here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll edit some notes and we're going to grab this user, paste it in, and then we're going to grab the password so that we have this as well. And now we have those and what we're going to do, what you would normally do, see, I know where we're going to go because this is really, and I've done this box before, but when you see this SVC TGS, this is telling me this is a ticket granting service and within Active Directory, you can have tickets for each user and this right here grants tickets for the user. So if we can somehow grant ourselves a ticket or get a ticket or get a hash, then we get on this box. So that's what ultimately we're going to do, especially when you see this TGS, this ticket granting service, then you need to be thinking uh, curb roasting or doing something with curb roast. But also something that's really common that you're going to see on Active Directory is that is this will be a TGT and it's a ticket granting ticket. And it's the ticket we need in order to get on to the network. So that's a lot of ticket saying, but anytime you're dealing with Active Directory, you're going to hear it a lot. Those are just a couple of uh, little acronyms that you need to be aware of. So with that, what you would do in a normal situation when you don't know what you're doing and you grab a user and a username is you're just going to go ahead and you're going to run SMB map again. So we just go SMB map and then we're going to go i think it's a capital u we'll just type in dash dash help 
and make sure that we do this right. So we're gonna have a user this time. It is a lowercase u and a lowercase b. So what we will do, it tells us a password or an NTLM hash. This NTLM hash, we're gonna see this later. Uh, this hash is one that we're gonna pull down from an active directory network. A domain controller can give us this, NTM, this NTLM hash. Sometimes you can grab these with Responder, which we're also gonna see later. So I, it caught me off guard when I saw that NTLM hash. I didn't realize that was a part of SMB map. So that's interesting. So note that uh, because we are gonna see that later. We're not gonna use the hash in order to grab this later in order to go into SMB map later but it's always useful to know that we can do this in the future just in case we have this hash and we're not able to crack it. So what this gives us the usage here. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go SMB map dash U and our username was SVC TGS and our password was GPP still standing strong. We'll paste that in. And then it looks like we give it the host, which is 10, 10, 10, 100. And then this should run and it'll tell us if we have access to any other shares that we didn't have access to before. And we do, we have access to users. We have access to sysvol now. We have this net login. And so in a normal situation, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you will look in all these uh, that we now have read access to so that we can enumerate some more. But we're actually not going to go that route because that's not the route we need to go. But you just go through and you do the exact same thing we just did in order to find this user and this password. And you just go ahead and look through here and see if you can find any more information that would help you gain access to the network. And so show you real quick, you can see the difference up here. We anonymously had read only right here, but now that we have a user, we have access to different shares and this will be helpful. Sometimes you will find a user or you'll have anonymous login and you'll only have access to one share and then you'll find another user and you'll have access to two shares and then you'll find another user and you'll finally be able to get onto the network. That does happen and it does take time and it does take time to go through and enumerate all of these but you just gotta be patient and run through the enumeration the way it's supposed to be done. And we're gonna continue on with the box active. I'm gonna show you two different tools from Impacket. First, uh, we'll just come over here, and this is what it looks like. It's Impacket, get NP users, and then it's the domain controller, the IP, so we give it the IP, we give it the name, which is active.htb. A lot of times you're gonna see in Hack the Box this as HTB, but elsewhere you're gonna see this is the username.local. We're actually gonna see one later that has a .local. And then the username, and let's pretend we found a username, but we don't have a password. And so what we would do is we'd try and go dash no dash pass and see if we could get a TGT from this service. And so unfortunately we're going to run it, but we're not able to get a TGT. Um, but we are going to see this again. We're going to try this again in another box in the future. And I don't actually remember if it works or not. So we will try it out and see if we can get this TGT. If you get a ticket back, you can do a pass the ticket attack. Uh, and the tickets last usually, I think it's I think it's 10 hours default by Windows. So you can use that ticket. I also see that I got this IP wrong. You can use that ticket and see what you're able to have access to. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show another Impacket tool. So it will look like this, Impacket dash get. And I think that it is users. Yes, it's this one. See, here's a box that was done as spooky.local. That one I think is from, try hack me if I'm remembering right. Now we'll go ahead and type in our active.htb slash sv c dash tgs we can delete this and then we'll go ahead and we'll paste in our password here so that we can get this hash 
So as you can see, impact it, we're going to use impact it here once, we're going to here use it again twice, and then we're going to use it a third time to actually get our shell on this box. So it's really important for us to use impact it and to know how to use it and to make sure you have it. I told you before earlier in this course that if any penetration tester is told they can have one tool, this is usually the tool they're going to go after. So for some reason, this doesn't seem to want to run. All right, so the problem turned out to be I had a dash right here and it needed to be an underscore. So now that we got that resolved, what we can see is we now have the name administrator here that it has spit down for us and it did not give us the hash. So we're gonna go ahead and run this again. Uh, it says that the clock skew is too great. Okay, so this is my box clock, the my Kali Linux box right here. The time does not match the time on the Kerberos Windows machine right here. So you can see the difference. So this error, you are gonna get this. I would, every single time you ever run this, <laughs> every single time I've run this, it always tells me the clocks don't match. I think you have to be within an hour and I don't remember how to fix this, so you just paste it in here, and there's gonna be a simple way to update this clock in one of these up here. So we'll go ahead and paste that in, and it's going to tell us how to fix this. It's because our time is not linked, and the mitigation for it. This is what we're looking for. Maybe it'll be in this GitHub page, I will go ahead and find this and bring you back once I have the mitigation for this. It turns out what you end up having to do is type in sudo apt install ntp date. Go ahead and run it, it will install. And then in order to link up your time, you just type, you type in sudo ntp date and then the IP address and you hit enter. And that will go ahead and update the time and then you'll go back over to the active directory um, box that we're working on and you will go ahead and run this command and you will get this output and so we have the administrator name here and this is their ticket so we'll go ahead and copy that and we'll cd into desktop htb and then we'll go into active and then we're going to name this gedit hash.txt and we will paste in the hash and we can save it and we're going to use hashcat to crack this so we'll type in cat and we'll hashtag hashcat and then we can go ahead and copy this paste it in here and we're told we need to use 131 100 and so that will be the hashcat um, type we're going to use so we'll go ahead and type in hashcat m 13100 hash.txt a and we're going to use the word list rocku so we'll go ahead and locate rocku.txt we will copy this and now we can go hashcat all over again, dash M one three one zero zero, and then we'll go hash, and then we'll paste in the directions to our word list, and we'll see if that runs. This will take a minute, so I will bring you back once Hashcat is finished running. All right, Hashcat it has finished running, and here is the password for this hash. You can go ahead and copy this and we'll go g edit notes and we can type in our i think the user was administrator so we can come up here and uh, it's on a different link but it's administ administrator and then this is the password and we're going to go ahead and log into that in the next video but what we just did is called curb roasting so we had the ticket graining service and it reached out to the domain controller and we were able to pull down the administrator with their hash and with that we were able to crack it 
and grab this password. And so in the next video, because there is no WinRM on this box, we're gonna go and get a shell on this Active Directory network in a different way. And with that, I'll see you there. And that is the end of this video. So in the future, we're gonna cover some post exploitation of Active Directory, which I think will be really helpful for you. So if you would like, you can subscribe and we'll get to that in the future. Thanks for watching.